This is Lady B, and this week I am making cheese balls for holiday entertaining. And this is something I have been doing for years. And you can buy them in the store, but they're so easy to make yourself. And if you make it yourself, you can really customize it. And over the years, as I've made these, I've actually come up with my own basic recipe that I now adjust depending on whatever it is I feel like or the likes and dislikes or allergies of my guests. And I'm going to share that with you today. The basic recipe plus the four different types of cheese balls I make, which I break down into an herb cheese ball, the cheesy cheese ball, for those real cheese lovers, all that's in it is cheese, just straight cheese. The uh, savory cheese ball, which is things like bacon, jalapeno, sun-dried tomatoes, but we'll get more into that later. And lastly, of course, is the seafood-based cheese ball. And each of these is a little bit different, but they all still start out with the same base recipe. So the base recipe is very simple you start with eight ounces of a creamy cheese, like cream cheese. You can also use Chev. This first recipe I am doing actually calls for Chev instead. There are other creamy cheeses out there also, but if you can't spread it with a knife, it's not soft enough. So most of the time you're just going to stick with cream cheese. And to this you add two cups of a shredded cheese. Now for this first recipe I'm going to use a mild white cheese, in this case a manchego, to go with the chef. So there's my two cups of shredded cheese. And to this you want to add something salty. Now you can just use salt and that would be anywhere from a half teaspoon to a teaspoon. You don't want to go higher than a teaspoon or you can use a soy sauce or a Worcestershire sauce or a combination of the two, in which case you can go up to an entire tablespoon, uh, which is three teaspoons. And uh, a lot of people will do like one teaspoon of soy sauce and two of Worcestershire or the other way around. In this case, for this first recipe I'm doing, I will be using salt. So I have here a half teaspoon of salt. Now, the next item that you add that's part of the base recipe is optional, but you will want to put it in most of them, which is a quarter cup of a grated or minced small chop onion. And you want a milder onion for this. You want a green onion, a red onion, or a sweet onion. Now, the first recipe I'm making does not actually need onion. It's one of those exceptions, so I won't be putting it in. Here's an example of what you do if you're using a green onion, however. You only want to use the white parts of the onion for adding into the cheese ball itself. So if that's the way you go, remember, save the green parts, the tops, for later and just use the white. Now, the last ingredient is also optional, and that is mayonnaise. This is something that you would add only if you want a really creamy cheese ball. One to two tablespoons is all it takes, but it does make a difference. Now, on to my first type of cheese ball. The first cheese ball I'm going to make is an herbal cheese ball. For that, you just need two tablespoons of dried or six tablespoons fresh herbs to add into the cheese ball. The kind of herbs you might put in are things like thyme, oregano, basil, parsley, coriander. Uh, you could put caraway in it. You could put peppers in it, paprika, cayenne. If you do use cayenne, you really only want a pinch or two. Uh, but red pepper flakes are always nice, half a teaspoon or teaspoon at the most if you like it really spicy. Uh, ground pepper is another thing you will put in it. Garlic powder is very good in a cheese ball. In fact, you'll often add that to other types of cheese balls for that little extra flavor. 
Another thing I like to do is to use curry powder or even a curry paste in my cheese ball. There's a lot of options. The herb ball I'm making today as a demonstration is actually an oregano lemon. So I have here one tablespoon of dried oregano and to that I will add around three tablespoons of fresh lemon zest. I do consider zest to be in that herb category. And for that, basically you get about one tablespoon, maybe a little more for each lemon. So you want one to three lemons for this, the zest from one to three lemons. And as a little extra in that, I'm going to put just a little bit of black pepper because it goes so well with both of those ingredients. Now, this is one of those, in, those recipes where you want to make it a few days ahead of time. You actually want that time for the lemon to really permeate into the entire cheese ball and the flavoring. Also, since I use dry oregano, it will also give time for that oregano to soften the flavor to combine as well. If you are going to be serving this right away, you can make it to serve right away. You will want to make sure and use fresh oregano, however, if that's the case. Uh, I really don't recommend still adding more than much more than a tablespoon, but it's up to you. I just like to have more of the lemon flavor than the oregano flavor. So now that I have all of my ingredients in here, I just have to mix it. And for that, I put a glove on and I just dig in and massage the whole thing together. You could try doing this with a spoon, but it is actually much more efficient to just knead it, to just knead it by hand and mix it by hand. To store it, all I do is take some plastic wrap and wrap it in the plastic wrap. Now, if you want to coat the outside of your cheese ball, I will use the plastic wrap to do so. I'll put it on the plastic wrap, roll it in it, and then roll it in the plastic wrap. Now, in the case of this lemon one, I don't actually need to put anything on the outside, but I do like to add a little bit of the dried oregano to the outside just to make it even clearer what kind it is. I cup when I make cheese balls, when I make cheese balls for the holidays, I will kind of color code the outside so I can tell what's on the inside because sometimes some of my different types of cheese balls will look very similar to others. So by putting different things on the outside, it helps me know what's on the inside. So in this case, I just want to add a little bit, just a sprinkling of my oregano. Now, because I'm going to be letting this sit, I can use this dried herb on the outside and it will be okay. If I was not going to be letting this sit and rest, then this would be a very bad idea to put dried herbs on the outside. You would normally only use fresh. There we go. One oregano lemon cheese ball. And you can see the size of this. You would pay a lot of money for one this size in the store and all it was was two cups of shredded cheese eight ounces of cream cheese and some additions it's that easy the next one is the cheesy cheese ball or the classic cheese ball and this is just cheeses so I have in here my eight ounces of my creamy cheese and my two cups of shredded cheese. Now for the cheesy or classic cheese ball, you can use any type of hard cheese to put in this. You can use a Gouda. You can use, uh, I like the goat cheeses, so I use Manchego. I've used a sharp cheddar. Um, any, anything you like that's a hard cheese that you can grate, you can use and combine with other things. Um, you do want it a little saltier in this one, so for this I have an entire tablespoon of soy sauce. And I am adding the onion because it just adds a really nice flavor. You don't actually need the onion. But I threw it in one year and my family really liked it, so I've started adding the onion to this one. So there's my quarter cup of onion. Now. The thing about the 
cheesy or classic cheese ball is you want to add um, up to five ounces of a soft cheese spread or soft cheese not cheese soft like that you spread with a knife though you can do it with the cheese spreads but for example the hickory farms their their original is actually a blue cheese which is what i have here this is a rofert now when i say up to five ounces it's going to depend on what soft cheese you use you can use any cheese in this as long as it's on the softer side you could use a camembert you could i suppose you could use a brie but i don't know about that um one of my favorites in my family is I will do it with a cheddar, shredded cheddar cheese, and I will use the Kraft Old English cheese spread as my additional cheese. Now, you think, oh, that doesn't sound very good, but the combination of the cheddar cheese and the Old English cheese spread is really delicious if you like that cheddar flavor. Now, personally, I prefer the blue cheese, which is why I'm making that today. However, I use Rofert cheese, and this is why I said up to five ounces, because the stronger the cheese is, the smaller the amount you want to use, or it just takes over and it becomes overwhelming. We want to make it pleasant for those who maybe aren't as experienced with these cheese. I can eat this straight, but not everybody can so in the case of Rofert, since it is one of the stronger blue cheeses, I only use two ounces. If you were, however, buying, say, a blue cheese crumbles, and they're the milder type that you would sprinkle on your salad, that you could use four or five ounces of it. It's entirely up to you. So let me get this open and slice this in half, because this is four ounces and I only need two. And that's it. It's that simple. Just whatever cheeses you like, throw them together, mix it in, and make a cheese ball out of it. So simple, so easy, and so delicious. And that's my favorite cheese ball, right there. But I love blue cheese. Like I said, I can eat the Rofort straight with no problem. Other people, if you're not used to strong cheeses, it is not for you. But added to something like this even for those who don't like strong cheeses this is still really delicious now you remember how I said I was saving the tops of the green onions for later now is later in the case of this one I like to use these on the outside of my Rofort cheese ball or classic cheese ball so again I'll put them in the middle and just roll it in it. And you'd be surprised how much this takes. This is probably about the tops off of six ounces of green onions. And there it is. Now, I actually almost forgot to mention that a teaspoon of garlic often enhances the flavor of these cheese balls. It's not needed just like the onions it's entirely optional but if you like that extra savoriness a little bit of garlic powder in it is really good with the with the basic classic cheese ball the next type of cheese ball I'm going to make is what I call the savory cheese ball now I already have my base here with my eight ounces of my creamy cheese and my two cups of shredded cheese also to the as part of the base we need to add a salt in this case I will be using two teaspoons of a soy sauce next is the onion optional but in this case I do want it so I have my quarter cup of my cut chopped green onions and those go in also so that is my base finished to this base recipe I am going to add my savory ingredients the first thing I add is a teaspoon of garlic powder as I said before garlic powder is often added to these other cheese balls the second thing I add for a savory one is I want a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon of some type of pepper in this case I have a red pepper flake because I think it will work well with what I'm making 
To this, you're going to add two to three ounces of your main ingredients, and you can add up to two ingredients for combinations, being two to three ounces of each, meaning you can get up to six ounces of these savory ingredients. And the sort of things that you might put in would be things like canned jalapenos, pickled jalapenos, uh, roasted red bell peppers, sun-dried tomatoes, pineapple tidbits, bacon, anything that you think of would go in and go well together. A very common, very popular one is actually the pickled jalapenos combined with bacon, especially when it's been added to a cheddar shredded cheese as opposed to the white I am using today. Very, very easy, simple combinations. You just do what sounds good to you. I have done the sun-dried tomatoes. They go really good with olives. That's another thing you could put in or on the outside. Um, the roasted red bell peppers, I find you don't really need to add anything to that. And I've actually done up to five ounces of the roasted red bell peppers. I've also done up to five ounces of the sun-dried tomatoes. It's whatever you like. Now, today I'm actually doing pineapple. Now, the thing about some of these ingredients are a lot of them do come canned, like the jalapenos and the pineapple. If you use these canned ingredients or if they're packed in oil, you must, must drain them really well before you add them to your cheese ball or it's going to end up too wet. So I've actually had these draining for over an hour in order to get them from being too wet. Now, this is supposed to be eight ounces, but that includes the liquid, I think. I don't know. I'm not putting the whole thing in, though. So, this is pineapple tidbits. I'm going to keep a little bit of that out. I do not need the whole amount. And again, I'm just going to mix it in. And this is another one where you can serve it right away, but I actually think it's better after a couple of days. Now, you might be wondering why I use tidbits and not crushed. And the reason is, is it's very, very difficult to get the crushed dry enough. And you'll end up with a soupy cheese ball very easily if you use the crushed pineapple. I mean, go ahead and try if you want. It tastes delicious, but it won't be very firm. So I have my plastic wrap here, and now I have to coat the outside. And for this one, I am using sliced almonds. So I'm going to put a pile of almonds here in the middle. And I'm going to take my cheese ball. And now that's outside. Now as this sits, these nuts will soften, so they won't be crisp, but that's okay. I just have them on there for looks. Now, a quick word of warning. If you do make one of these with something spicy, the longer it sits, the spicier it's going to get. So you'll want to keep that in mind depending on the tastes of whoever it is you are making it for. If people really like it spicy, go ahead and put it in. Let it sit for a few days. It will blow your brains out. It will be so hot. It will be so good. But... If people just like a little bit of burn, you want to keep that little, that amount of spice that you put in here, those amount of peppers to be on the smaller side. Now, I have a brother-in-law who loves it spicy. So for him, I make a bacon pickled jalapeno. And in that one, I am not shy with the extra pepper that goes in it. And he loves it. The next cheese ball is the seafood cheese ball. Now for this, you're going to want either imitation crab, real crab, any type of shredded seafood. You can use a white fish. I have used shrimp. Whatever you use, it just has to be cooked. And again, I have here my base of my eight ounces of my creamy cheese and two cups of my shredded cheese. That stays the same. To this, I'm going to add two teaspoons of soy sauce. And on this one, I do want to make it a little creamier, so I have my two tablespoons of mayonnaise. For my seafood, as I said, I have shrimp here. Now, to prepare the shrimp, 
I have defrosted it. I bought this pre-cooked and frozen, so I defrosted it, patted it dry with a paper towel, and then cut it smaller. The size I bought was this extra small, small 100 to 150 per pound, and it's 12 ounces. You want 12 ounces to one pound of whatever seafood you're going to put in. 12 ounces is about the minimum you want. I've chopped them a little smaller just so that they are easier to pick up, put on a cracker in this. Now, you can buy the canned shrimp that are even smaller. If you do that, you're going to want to not add your salt until you've already put your shrimp in because sometimes those are, are canned in a brine and so they'll already be salty and you won't want to add any salt. But these were not salted in any way. They were not brined, so I can just put them right in. Now, you may have noticed I did not mention the onions in the base recipe. That is because for your seafood, you actually want an additional quarter cup of onions. So I actually have here a half cup instead of a quarter cup to add to this between the base recipe and the seafood recipe. To this for seasoning, along with my shrimp, I want to add a teaspoon of garlic powder. Just so good with it. And I want just a little bit of pepper, like a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon. I have here a quarter teaspoon of the red pepper flakes because, well, I just, I've used the, the flakes, I've used paprika, I've used, you know what, I'm going to use paprika. I've just changed my mind. Paprika sounds better right now. But you want that little extra bit of flavor. So there's my quarter teaspoon of paprika. See, you just change it, suit yourself. All right. Now, the last ingredient, which is optional but is traditional, is celery. Uh, one to two stalks of celery. One, I think, is enough, but some people really like it. So if you really like celery, go ahead and put in two. But it is traditional to cut up some celery and add it in. My family does not like celery, so I leave it out. Now, if you wanted to make a seafood salad instead of a cheese ball, you would omit the cream cheese, and you would just use a mayonnaise instead. You might thin that mayonnaise down with just a tablespoon or two of milk instead of using the tablespoon or two of mayonnaise to make it creamier. And that's basically what a seafood salad is. But my family, we like it on crackers. So for us, it's a cheese ball. And it is going to be looser than your standard cheese balls. I don't bother rolling it in anything. In fact, sometimes I'll actually just put it in a plastic container but you can make a ball out of it. Now, if you wanted to put something on the outside of it, there are plenty of options. You can put the green onions, you can put chopped nuts, you can put parsley, uh, bell peppers. I've even on some of my spicy cheese balls have actually used the pickled jalapenos as the outside of the cheese ball. Just whatever you put around it, make sure it's something that you think will go well with the flavor of the cheese ball itself and that you can easily recognize so that you know which it is. Like I said, it's a way of identifying what's inside. But for me, for seafood, that's it. You know, I suppose if you like celery, you could even use celery on the outside of this. It's whatever you like. And there you have it. How to make cheese balls yourself at home in four different styles. However you like it. Now, I love you all, whether new or old. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and I will see you next week. Until then, whether making cheese balls or any other treat for the holiday season, just remember, don't be afraid to suit yourself and make whatever it is you do exclusively you. So for that, I have a teaspoon of, oh no, I have a tablespoon, okay, about three tablespoons of your 
three tablespoons. Yes, three tablespoons. Three tablespoons of fresh. That's good. And I will use the old. It's. Oh, let me just a second. Let me remember the name. So good. <clears throat> oh, my throat. <laughs> I guess I have a frog in my throat. <laughs> 